Hi, this is Phil, and I'm here to tell you all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. Get early access to all of our interviews, including the monthly Chichester chats with writer and comic book legend DG Chichester, new episodes of classic Capes and Lunatics shows, including The Quantum Zone, This, That, or The Third, and many, many more specials, all completely uncensored. Access starts for $3 a month, full video when you pledge $5 a month. Check out the link in our show notes, or go to patreon.com slash capesandlunatics. Hope to see you there. Hi, this is Devin Grayson, and you are listening to the Capes and Lunatics podcast. Diggity dink. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the Nightwing News. It's been a while. I am Phil. Joining me once again, it is. Hello, I'm Kristen. That's right. We're back. This time, we're going to talk. Some of the new comics that came out, including a bunch of Night Terror stuff and some World's Finest Teen Titans and some Tales of the Titans and some Harley Quinn episodes. Got some comics. All right, so I don't know. Should we start with the uh, Harley Quinn? Get the uh, get that out of the way first. Sure, makes sense. So, how did you feel about the butt jokes? Uh, I mean, it feels it feels expected, and I'm surprised that it took them until the second season that Nightwing was in it to do it. It just seemed like every episode, like, but, 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 I, well, but, I guess we're not going to get too much more of that, because spoilers, kids, seems as Dick Grayson has uh, passed away on the show, well, has been murdered on the show. You really think he's dead? I don't know, there was a body, I don't know, again, it's, it's a comic universe, yeah, I don't know, but, I'm trying to think if they killed anybody off and if they've come back, um, it's... Yeah, I don't know. I, a part of me feels like he'll come back. And also I wonder, I with Joker saying he did it, and how Joker is kind of Harley's nemesis, it feels like it's going to be resolved in some way. Or I could see Joker just like taking credit for it, but he didn't do it, but he just wanted to get back into uh, villainy. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, I was just like, "What, really?" I'm like, I thought they were making, building him up to be this big thing this season, and then just like, nope. It looked like he's he died, and Barbara's not taking it well. No, definitely not. I thought I thought that it was a little. I mean, it fit with the show, but it was also definitely ridiculous how harley was like i have to train you to fight without your gadgets i was like everyone knows how to do that particularly damien mm. as damien knows how to turn anything into a weapon exactly but my favorite joke was when she gave birth to all the sharks and then the last shark you thought was dead and uh. out the, shark. the magician was like is this your card i was like yes that was great <laughs> the vegas one yeah that was pretty great and now, and now Poison Ivy is a CEO of evil. Mm-hmm. Oh, and I did like how when they went to Malcon that they both Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg were there. <laughs> I thought that oh, was yeah. a nice touch. Oh, yeah. I'm trying to think what else did we get? Uh, what, else, what else happened? <laughs> oh, what about Alfred going to jail? Uh, yeah, that was pretty... But he's trying to be, get. He was trying to be with Bruce, but they're like, no, no, no that's, you're you're not going the rich uh, no, country club. Uh, something's up. Obviously, Alvin. He's a shady character. <laughs> yeah, I have my suspicions. Uh, well, what did you think of the butt jokes? I mean, I, it was fine. Again, I didn't expect it from this show, like you said. But it's just, I don't know. It almost seemed like that I was like, oh, another butt joke. It's like they were just like hammering you with the butt jokes. <laughs> Oh, then wasn't there? Oh, one? I have to say, I read an article, and I did not. I would not have expected that that guy who sniffs cocaine was real. I would have thought they had made him up for the show, but apparently, he existed before the show. Oh yeah, yeah. Who? What was the name of the character? Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say that. Uh, that Snow something. 
Oh yeah, I was gonna say I've heard of the character, no but, but I wasn't. St- Snowflame, maybe. Yeah, I don't know if he. I don't know if he. I don't know if he actually does cocaine in the comics, but yeah, I, I was pretty sure that was a pre-existing character. <laughs> uh, yeah, a lot of times they show like those group shots of the villains. Like, they, yeah, it's like, I think like all those were most of them were pre like pre uh, existing characters. Right. Yeah, and so I wouldn't have expected. I thought that was pretty funny. And Bane is still here. I do love Bane. Mm-hmm. Bane, oh. is pr- Bane is pretty amazing in that show. The pasta maker! <laughs> <laughs> yes, the pasta maker. <laughs> uh. Uh, but did you notice that basically Nightwing and Lex Luthor were wearing the same under- the same style of underwear? <laughs> when they were doing that um, trap with Nightwing's butt to uh, okay. big, and he had that kind of long g-string thing on, and then I swear Lex Luthor was wearing the same thing on the at Malcon. I don't know. Was that what Lex thinks he's got a butt as good as Dick's? I don't think so. <laughs> no, but it was similar. <sighs> so yeah, so I'm kind of sad if uh, yeah if, if Dick's in the, if Dick's dead, and even if he returns, it's gonna probably be a while before we see him again. So. I know. It's, uh, and Barbara is really taking it hard, so. Well, she said, yes. I just want him to come back. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it feels like none of the... Because the show is not really about them, so none of the heroes really get to uh, yeah. work up to their potential. That girl a little more so than the others. But Damien's role has been pretty small. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, how'd you feel about that? Like, after... Uh, after the, or- you know, Damien's all afraid. He's like, he's like, oh, I think I'm gonna stay with my mom. <laughs> I'm not afraid. I'm gonna stay stay with my mom then. <laughs> I did think it was kind of funny. I mean, Tally is kind of cool in the show. I did think it was funny how she was like, "Why are you so old?" <laughs> I know. And he's like, "Is this a pacifier?" She's like, "Here's a gift. What is this? A pacifier?" Yeah. <laughs> and she gives him that rattle. <laughs> it's funny. She treats him like a baby. Yeah. Which is very different from the comics, but is preferable to what they did in the comics. Like, that would not be funny for the show. So, I liked the direction they took. Yes. It reminded me a little bit of Lloyd's dad in Lego Ninjago. When he, (laughs) when at the beginning of the movie he turns 16 and he's face calling his dad. And his dad's like, you're not my son. My son is bald. And he's like, dad, that's what I looked like 16 years ago. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Oh jeez. All right. So should we uh, talk some uh, comics? Yes. All right. I'll say. Where should we start? We have quite the uh, stack here. Uh, oh, we did a few weeks ago. We did get the wrap up to uh, Night Terror's Robin. So we got Night Terror's Robin number two. Oh yeah, I think I just read number one. Okay. Well, you can tell me about it. I mean, again, it's basically Tim and Jason. Working the the escape the nightmare and <clears throat> and then they uh, once again it's like oh you have to face your fears and stuff and then they pretty much like hey let's trade fears <laughs> let's fight each other's fears very smart yes so they, you know of course that's the whole thing they break out and then they're just like oh uh, you know I'm sure everyone else needs our help so then they go racing off. Cause, not this one, but mo- a lot of the other ones, like it, it, all the most of the number twos, it says, you know, to be concluded in night. Was it night tears? Not, uh, is it night's end or something? But yeah, there's there's like a finale issue coming up here, and I don't know if it's next oh, week or the week after. Not in night wings. They were just like end. <laughs> yeah, no, no, yeah. The Robins ones just said end too. So it's yeah, it's kind of weird. Oh, okay, but yeah, the Titans one said. Oh yeah, yeah, the Titans. And yeah, a lot of them did. Uh, I didn't even read them all this week yet, but uh, I, I know a lot of the ones last week did. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, do we want to talk some of the Titan stuff that didn't have Dick in it per se, like Night Terrors, Titans one and two, and uh, we got new, more new tales of the Titans with this time with Raven. Yeah, whatever you want. That's fine. Uh, okay, well, t- okay, tales of the Titans with Raven. What did you? All right, what did you think? Uh, it was. I thought it was good. I yes, just, I, I just, just gotta remind myself. Yeah, I'm, well. Oh, yeah, yeah, with her brother. Yeah. Yeah. 
And basically she had to go in with like pa- without her powers for a while, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was a good issue, but again, for you know, for purposes of this show, there was no Nightwing in it, so. Right. Yeah. But yes, it was a good issue. But yeah, if you're a fan of Raven, yes, this was this was a good issue. Uh, I mean, the art inside wasn't bad, but I really liked that cover. Yes, yeah, the art, yeah, the cover was very, um, like, felt like really good throwback to the yeah. new Teen Titans. Yeah, like, it wasn't George Perez's art, but it was someone doing, like, a good, like, homage to George Perez, yeah. Yeah. Mm, let's see who did the cover here. Uh, uh, oh, Nicholas Scott and Annette Kwan cover. Yeah, and then there's a bunch of variants, but yes. Yeah. Uh, bu- 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 oh. oh yeah, there was a Blue Beetle variant cover because yes, the Blue Beetle movie came out, kids. Oh yeah, have you seen it? Yes, yes I saw it. It's good. I mean, again, I mean, I think they could have done a little more work on like the story, but like the cast was all the cast were really good and stuff. And was it better than Flash? Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, and that pains me because I'm a big <laughs> Flash fan. But yes, yeah, yeah. Well, I kind of like it too because except with the exception of like two people, it's like. I wasn't too familiar with the rest of the cast, and I kind of like that in a superhero movie. It's you know, it's, so it's not like, oh, hey, that's Ben Affleck in a Batman costume. So I, I can like throw mm-hmm. myself into it more if I'm not as familiar with the cast. Yeah, that's a good one. But no, it's it's good. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I think it's nice that it is Blue Beetle. You know, he hasn't gotten as many. You know, he's definitely not oversaturated the market. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. I mean, is it, he's not really a household a household name. So it's nice that it's nice when they do that. I know. I just hope the movie does does good business because you know, just like the Flash and the other stuff have you know, people are just, if people are just like, oh, it's a DC movie. Maybe hope that doesn't turn them off. True enough. Uh, but yeah, the Raven one was good, but I was like, it surprised me in the beginning. I'm like, wait a minute, Pantha? I'm like, didn't she die? <laughs> oh, yeah. That, well, I didn't know about Pantha dying, but I was like, uh, Pantha. <laughs> but, th- but that might have been before New 50. I'm trying to, was that before New 52? So again, it's like continuity, but all of a sudden, I'm like, she's going to be a mother. I'm like, wait, what? I thought she like hated kids and people and... <laughs> Panther's hard to get a read on. <laughs> I know. And again, it's been several continuity shifts here, so who knows? Yeah. Mm. But yeah, that gets Raven thinking about her own mother and stuff. Uh, but yeah, like I said, it's a good issue. It's kind of like this... Uh, I mean, I forget. It's been a while since I read this. Is that good? Uh, oh yeah, Amadeus, the long ago spirit of the Azerathi. Yeah, helps her help her brother. Who? Yeah, but she has to go in without her powers and like save this you know save the woman you know the, her brother's mother and just be like yeah my you know the whole thing with her mother and stuff and yeah it reminded me or it felt like it had, maybe had a little bit of um it felt like it fit a little bit in with the show as well like maybe it was a little bit inspired by the show or that if you would watch or that if you would watch the show and were interested in getting into the comics, then I I think it, familiar, which I thought was probably a nice idea. Yeah, I think uh, a lot of modern comics, especially DC and Marvel, they try to do that these days. It's like trying to have something that either look or something familiar from like a TV show or a movie. If you know, hope and then snag someone who may have just watched the show. Yeah. But yeah, those Tales of the Titans have been good so far. You know, we had got the Starfire, and now we got the Raven. So I was gonna say, who we got left? I think we got we got Gar. I think Cyborg. Gar. Oh, is Cyborg. Yet? I was trying to remember. Do we have a Cyborg? Oh, one? Or is it Donna? Gar? Donna and Gar. Is it Donna and Beast Boy. Cyborg and Beast Boy. I think no, yeah, I mean, Donna and Beast Boy. I think. Yeah, I, think I think Cyborg so. has a mini series, so he's. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I was gonna say anyone who has like their own like mini series or series going right now. I think yeah. They're trying to focus on the other ones. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, but yeah those have been good. All right. And speaking of Titans, again, just uh, today we got part, you know, we got Night Terrors Titans number two. So we didn't talk number one yet. But yeah, one, so Night Terrors Titans, what did you think? Uh, once once again, no no dick in these ones, even though we have the bat on the cover. There. So at first I was confused with, at first I thought it was Donna Troy. 
And then when Donna came in, I was like, wait, who's this person? So once it was clarified that the woman was kind of the personification of Titan's Tower, then I liked it better. Yeah. Then I was like, oh, okay, now I kind of understand what's going on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because this woman, yes, is... uh. Mm. Yeah, because the Titans are going through their nightmares, especially. And then, like, it, issue two here, it's like, wait a minute. Why are all of these, like, uh, people attacking us inmates? It's like, oh, yeah, the tower used to be the Blood, you know, Bloodhaven private prison. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, a lot of these night terrors are good. They're better than I thought they'd be. But, like, yeah, some of them are just, like, straight up nightmares. But then some of them, they try to, like, add, like, a supernatural aspect and stuff. And mm-hmm. uh, So... Mm. So yeah, the Titans are once again just like in the Robin issue. Yeah, the Titans are trying to fight their way through their nightmare. They have to like fight like nightmare versions of themselves. Yeah, I think the freakiest one is Donna with like the like it's like looks like Donna but with like multiple big heads. That's freaky. Yes. Yeah. There says to be continued in. Oh, there says Night Terror's Night's End. Yes. Is that a different? So is that a different thing? I think, well, it's like, you know, it's like you have the regular Night Terror series. Then after that issue, I guess it's going to be, uh, that's going to be the wrap up issue, Night Terror, Night's End. So uh, okay. instead of just slapping a number five or whatever on it, they're just like, oh yeah, Night Terror, Night's End. I see. I guess. Yeah. You know, it's like when they do an alpha or an omega issue. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, so someone who hasn't read all of them and basically just read like the Titans one and like the Nightwing one, and you said you read the first Robin one. What what did you think of the Night Terror stuff? Um, I thought it was I thought it was interesting. Uh, as kind of like a fun little mm-hmm. thing. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It doesn't really feel like it contributes that that much. That's why it still seems weird to me that it didn't what? come out in. Halloween time because I feel like I mean I like but it feels it feels very much like a gimmick yeah it is I mean they, they've done this other years that's, yeah like and that's fine I guess I just feel like I wish the gimmick made more I shouldn't say made more sense but I think it would be better if the gimmick was I don't know. It just would make more sense if it was. Yeah, October would be it. It makes sense. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, they've done these before in like July and August, like a two month event. And I don't know what it is, if it's just like vacation for people or what, but. So that I think would make it better. Mm-hmm. There we go. Yeah, it doesn't because re- it doesn't really seem to matter. And particularly with the I actually thought the Titans one made a little bit more sense with um with since their tower was repurposed and stuff. Um the Nightwing one, I googled some reviews of it because afterwards I was like, okay, well that was interesting. And yeah, people were kind of like, yeah, it was interesting, but it doesn't really matter. Okay. <laughs> and I was like, yes, I guess. Because particularly because the big bad insomnia is barely in the Nightwing one. Like, doesn't even really make an appearance. Yeah, that's the thing, because it's like he was looking through everyone's nightmares looking for this. Was it the Nightmare Stone or something? So it's like, yeah, so it's like, so, so like 99% of the issues, it's like, even if he does show up, it's like, it's not going to like have, mm-hmm. he's basically in and out. Yeah. But yeah, well, that's the other thing, too. A lot, a lot of these Night Terrors aren't written by the regular monthly, you know, the monthly writer and stuff. So it's like, yeah, you know, it's not going to have any lasting effect. That's what I said. That's like the good thing about like the Green Lantern and the Shazam issues. Well, like they are written by the people writing the on the regular monthly books. So, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, and that's fine. I guess I just feel like with the Titans and using the Tower, that feels more organic yeah. to what's going on in the book, and I like that idea. And so I don't know. I guess I just thought, oh, that's that's cooler. That's more interesting um yeah a lot of a lot of people like yeah, all these issues they've they're like the like the ideas that's supposed to be the same but people take different approaches to this thing and yeah like yeah like stuff like that yeah that was pretty cool mm-hmm. 
But yeah, no, the Nightwing one, I mean, it was good, but it's like, I don't know. It's like, so, I mean, I get Dick being afraid of losing Barbara, but then it's like, uh, so wait, is he afraid of murdering Batman? Yeah, so I guess, and again, when I read, apparently that, um, so there, I think I like the second one better because it was a little funnier, you know, like when Barbara is has that tray of this like motor oil and <laughs> oh yeah, stuff like that. That was kind of funny. Um, and I guess, I guess that the the back rooms of Arkham, how they're those kind of tan cubicles. I guess that's a thing on the internet. So that's also kind of a joke. I didn't realize that that was a joke. That had to be explained to me that it was a joke, but. I suppose if you know that, then that's also kind of funny. Well, and how, like, um, Killer Croc and his face face had been made into a handbag. (laughs) Yeah. And stuff like that. So it was kind of funny. It was funnier in the second, in the second one. So that was, so that was nice. But I thought the ending was weird. Um, and by that, I mean the abs, with Nightwing, I mean the absolute ending. Mm. where they're like, darkness is a part of us. You liked it. It left you wanting more. And he's like, no. Uh, and then he's like, some of them stay with it. And I'll be thinking about this one for a long time. And it's like, I don't know. It just, I don't know. It just felt like a weird ending. <laughs> yeah, I know. And again, you know, we won't see it, but I'm sure eventually he'll, he'll learn. Oh, yeah. And this a guy insomnia was messing with everyone's dreams. So, yeah, that's why you're having this horrible nightmare. Yeah. Right, and, like, what's happening with the Scarecrow is, like, is this, that was one thing that's a little bit unclear. Is the Scarecrow staying in the dream, or is he dreaming that? Well, that's the other thing I was like, too. I was like, I'm like, it was confusing to me. It's like, are people's dreams linking up? I'm like, was that really Jonathan Crane, or was that just, you know, a figment of his imagination? Yeah. Right. And I guess that was maybe one thing where also the Titans kind of edged out for me. Nightwing is because it was obvious that they were all having their own dreams and then they were interacting. And that made sense because it's a team book. But then with this one, I was kind of like, wait, why did Batgirl and why did Cass and Steph suddenly show up in Nightwing's book? Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, that's the thing. I'm like, is he just imagining them? Is that really them? Because, I mean, they mentioned their dreams. She was like, I saw my dad. I saw myself. So it kind of seemed. But, yeah, it, then it was odd. It was almost like they were making the second issue a team-up issue. Mm-hmm. And, then, and then it was a little unclear because it's kind of, but this is Nightwing's book. So is it, yeah, what's what exactly is going on? Oh, yeah, if you look in that, uh, the, the cafeteria Arkham there, there's a lot of in-jokes there. Like, you know, the penguin looks like yeah. a penguin and stuff. So I'm assuming that's Tarantula. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, that I thought, so that was kind of cool. I yeah. thought that was was funny and more interesting. But yeah, then some of it, it was just kind of unclear. I mean, I like, yeah, how, how this is supposed to be interacting. Yeah, like you said, is that really Scarecrow? I mean, I kind of, I kind of, I kind of get it. I almost, I don't know if it's intentional or not, or you know, if they are trying to set it because it's like you know, you can't have a dream and like you'll see like random image imagery and be like, oh, what is that? I don't even know what that what that's supposed to be about. So I don't know if that was intentional or not, but but yeah, that was just weird with like Barbara being a cyborg almost. Right, and then it's like that's Barbara's fear of being too reliant on technology machinery it's like okay but so yeah their dreams are interacting in some way i don't know and i don't know i just felt like this is going to be like your new meme as uh you know nightmare batman running at him going murder most foul <laughs> <laughs> like you said that's what the bard said anyway mm-hmm. and then of course yeah insomnia tries to get him with the uh old uh flying grayson's nightmare Right, yeah, and Tony Zuko popping up and just... Mm-hmm. But again, yeah, it's so weird Like when he goes, he falls off the trapeze and Scarecrow catches him. I'm like, so is Scarecrow supposed to be a friend in this thing? Or is... I'm like, is Scarecrow supposed... To... 
I mean, I think a little bit because Scarecrow gave him that map and kind of helped him. Yeah, because I was like, okay, I was like, okay, so Scarecrow's supposed to be his guide. I was like, so it is Scarecrow like his subconscious trying to steer him th- himself through this thing? Because that's like reading the first issue. I was like, is that Jonathan Crane, met, real, the real Jonathan Crane messing with him? Or Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, then how he's like, I know a part of you liked it when you got to kill Daddy. Darkness is a part of us. Mm-hmm. You tasted it and it left you wanting more. So I'm like, are we supposed to think like, yeah, he really didn't want that? Or is it like he just worries about, you know, his nightmares, losing his family, letting them down, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I mean, I guess it was a little bit interesting and different in that his his nightmare was a little bit forward looking. You know, he was worried about losing Barbara. He's worried about. You know, his nightmare wasn't just, oh, let me relive my parents dying over and over and over again. I guess that was nice. Yeah. <laughs> Mixed it up a little. I mean, I wonder, I wonder though, it's like, I mean, we did get some bad family stuff, but I wonder just because if, because the Titans had their own night terrors thing. I'm like, we really didn't get much with the Titans in this book. Yeah. I wonder if that was intentional or not, just because it's like, oh, they, have, oh yeah, they're going to have their own thing. Yeah, I feel like it was that... Because otherwise, why would they, um, it felt like they were trying to get everybody in because it was like, oh, boom, all of a sudden they tossed in Stefan mm-hmm. and passed, but then they barely got any screen time. <laughs> and then, uh, what did you think of the art? Because again, this isn't our friend Bruno Redondo. I mean, I, I like no, it. I did like the art. Uh, truthfully. I thought the art was the best thing about these. Okay, I mean, yeah, for the most part, I did, but some of the it, it looks like overly cartoony in some points. But I'm just like, okay, I mean, that's fine. But is it the same person that did the um, issue with when the imp showed up? It reminded me of the imp. Oh, of the um, imp issue. Who, who is this? Uh, Danielle Di Niculo. Uh, I don't know. Let me look this up. But it, yeah, let me look this up. Yeah, don't you say that? It does look similar. Uh, but no, I, I I mean I like these I like these Nightwing uh, Night Terrors. But yeah, again, it's just oh yep, it is the yeah you are right. It is the same uh, person who uh, drew that the Imp issue nine ninety eight. Yes, good job. So yeah, like yeah, I mean I don't know. I guess it wasn't yeah like I liked it. It wasn't bad, but I was also kind of like whatever. <laughs> they think we're spoiled with Bruno Redonda. That's a... all right. Uh, so yeah. So again, that gets a seal of approval, and uh, we also got World's Finest Teen Titans number two. All right. Yeah, I guess the thing is, I just think it's funny. Yeah, I was like, some of these dreams stay with us, and I'll be thinking about this one for a long time. But like, really, will you? I mean, probably not. It will probably never get mentioned again. <laughs> no, nah, probably not. I mean, again, unless. <laughs> Because again, unless those writers are on, on the uh, write another Nightwing story, but even if they do, it'll probably be a while. And again, we'll have to see what we'll have to see what happens to Insomnia at the end of that uh, event. So, mm-hmm. yeah, that's why I that's why it was cool. That's why I just feel like I don't know. I I wanted it to be around October because particularly with Nightwings, it did, they did give it a kind of good horror movie vibe yeah. with you know the. Like, this guy being all kind of like squished up and stuff and uh, the jokes. And so it just felt like it would have been really good around Halloween and it would have made more sense mm-hmm. around around Halloween because then instead of it just being, why are you doing this random thing? It's like, oh, yeah, we're doing this random thing, but it's for Halloween. So you're like, ah. Exactly. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> all right. Uh... Oh, sorry, I was just looking up when, when the uh, next issue of Nightwing comes out. September 19th, so. And that's the pirate one, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Nightwing and Batgirl as they journey across the ocean in search of the whole secret society that debates back to when Bloodhaven was founded. Ooh. All right, so yeah, all right. So, uh, world's finest Teen Titans. What did you All think? right, we're getting some more. Yep. Karen, wait, was Karen in the first issue? Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I believe she. Yeah, she was. Oh yeah, yeah, she was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When they fought the. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But Mal is new. Yeah, Mal's new. 
Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, uh, we had uh, we had Lil. Did we have Lil? Oh no, we didn't. We didn't have Lil Finn. Was it Gnark in the first one? Oh. Yeah, no. Oh right, yeah, yeah. So that's been an interesting thing. Is that this world's finest Teen Titans is it isn't a it isn't exactly a Teen Titans Year One recreation because it is broader than just um, than just the original ones. So. Yeah, it's yeah, basically yeah. Mark Waits just yeah, re, re a new origin basically yeah. Mm -hmm. But he's really getting in people from the a lot of for the late sixties and seventies. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the Titans show up to this uh, old house in North Carolina, uh, and Roy and Dick are still going at it. <laughs> Don't get your cape in a bunch, Tweety Bird. Don't you mean Batnark? <laughs> But this one was kind of, this one almost reminded me of like a Night Terrors issue too, because uh, they're like seeing, they're like seeing stuff in this house. Uh, like yes. Hallucinations yeah. and. Yeah, it also felt a little Scooby-Doo. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, yeah. Again, teenagers. The yeah. The house. Yeah. And Gar Garth kind of has to open up to this, uh, to this girl who's like stuck in the house. Yeah. Well, but I did want to say that, yeah. So Robin and. Uh, speedy going at it again, but um, he did have a point because Roy's like, are you sure you want Aqualad to do this? Unless there's a fish tank in there, he'll be useless. And it's like, hey, that's rude. I'm sure your anti-psychic attack arrow will save the day. Just go. <laughs> yep. I mean, yeah. And again, in this one, there wasn't a ton of dick either, which again, we can, you know, expect dick to be front and center in all of these things, but like right, they're expanding the cast. Yeah, and again, he does appear a lot in Batman Superman World's Finest. But yeah, you're right. This did fit in very well with the Night Terrors because yeah, they're having. I'd say like their fears or. Yeah, their fears. Well, and their her fears, um, like rejection, alienation. They're uh, kind of coming to life, and yes. Yes, this girl Dala says, yeah, she's uh I guess uh she can kinda read minds. Uh but yeah, I guess she could kinda get a hold of her powers here. So the Titans are seeing uh all kinds of stuff in this house until yeah, like I said, Gar has to be like uh 'cause she's like, I'm a monster. He's like, No, 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 everyone's everyone's insecure, you know. Growing you know, everyone of course everyone is growing up. Talking about how the Atlanteans uh thought he was a repulsive evolutionary throwback so he was born with purple eyes. Mm, but yeah, but they're here. Yes, the rejection, bullying, and so of course they do the bullying with Speedy because he's kind of an a hole to some of the other Titans. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fears are manifesting. Yeah, so you know, yeah, so Garth helps this girl <clears throat> rein in her powers. He's like, "Would you like some help?" She's like, "Yes." He's like, "Okay." Mm. But he even he tells her he's like, "You know, even I have the stuff. You know, have to work on this stuff sometimes." Yep. But yeah, her, hey, uh, Garth, Lilith, and uh, Gnark stay with the girl while the others leave. <laughs> oh, I guess this is what we're getting next. Oh, yeah, next time. What are we getting? Titans Con. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> I love that last panel there. You know, you see Roy and. Uh, <clears throat> well, but something's going on with Donna. Mm -hmm. and she's worried about what she saw in there about the Amazons. Yeah, I, I wonder if I wonder if Mark Wade's gonna play with that, where it's like you know, remember for a while she's like, oh, Wonder Woman's sister or adopted sister. And then it's like after Crisis, they had to like kind of mess with that. So it's like, I wonder if they're gonna be like, if he's gonna do something with that, where it's like, do I remember the real truth? I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, that was that was funny. You're invited to, and they're all like, oh, cool, and Robin's what? I know. Look at that look on Dick's face, like what? <gasps> Because you could just tell he's like, he's, no, because he's probably thinking, how is Batman going to react? Exactly. To this? That's what I was going to say. You know, that look is just, oh, no, I'm going to have to hear it from him. Yep. And yes, of course, yeah, and of course, this is a modern reimagining of like their early days because, yeah, they all have like cell phones. And yep. That'd be so funny. They'd be like, hey, look at my groovy cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> look at my hip cell phone. They couldn't not have cell phones now. I, know. I mean, that would, be, that would be ridiculous. Especially teenagers, yeah, no. Mm -hmm. 
that would strain belief. <laughs> oh yeah, because you know, no matter what year you're reading this, it's always like, oh yeah, this is probably like oh ten years ago or something. So, mm-hmm. so yeah. So what do you what have you been? Assuredly. So yeah, so you've been enjoying this so yeah, far. Yeah, I think it was good. It's very diggity dank. It definitely is. Uh, I'm trying to remember because I, I don't think this is ongoing. This is a, pretty sure this is a mini series. So yes, I think it is. Which is kind of sad because I, I I think this would be a good uh, companion book to the uh, regular Titans book, but yeah, again with flashback stuff, I guess you only you know always have somewhat of a shelf life on it. Prequels, yeah. Trying to see if it says. I'm trying to remember if this is like four or. I think it might be six. Hmm. Try and see here. Up, uh, everywhere I look, I'm not seeing a. Uh, usually, sometimes it'll say like one of whatever, two of whatever. But yeah, I mean, it's it again. It's been good, and you know, if everyone's been enjoying uh, Batman Superman World's Finest, yeah, you'll like this book. Oh yeah, I am not. Uh, so how much is Dick in the last two? Uh, well, he was in that uh, wrap up with Amazo and stuff, but then the newest one that came out when they started the new arc, he's not in it because they jump back even further to show like when Clark and Bruce first meet. So it's like yeah, even okay, earlier nice on. Like yeah. So, so I was going to say this teen, this teen Titans miniseries is timed good. Cause yeah, Dick's not in the current, uh, arc. It's even further back. Ooh. All right. All right, so Kristen, any other th- any thoughts on any any other thoughts on any of these books or? I think those are most all of my thoughts. All right, all right. So next week we'll uh, do another classic review. Pull this up, make sure I remember this right. Oh yeah, what is it? I gotta remind myself. Yeah, so we'll do that, and then the episode, and then we'll take our break again, and then when we come the episode, yeah, so. Two episodes from now, yeah, we'll do the new books again. Uh, but yes, uh, yeah, next week we'll do Nightwing fifty four and fifty five from. Uh, wait, is that the one I had down? Wait a minute, no, I'm sorry, no, I'm sorry, that's September's. No, uh, we're gonna do Nightwing one forty two through one forty six. That's in that Cloisters era. Uh, oh yes, yes, so we're gonna jam because i think we did 141 <laughs> so yeah we're gonna we're gonna get, pick up yes. right up from there after that so yeah 142 and 146 uh, so i have a feeling you'll like that oh didn't he reach out oh i'll, I'll have to was that tomasi i'll have to try to reach out again and be like hey we're doing it again you want to join us <laughs> yeah so i can tell him how stoked i was exactly all right, kids. So yeah, there's your homework. Yeah, next episode we'll do Nightwing one forty two through one forty six. Then we'll take our two week break for Electric Mullet, and then we'll be back. Uh, yes, with when Nightwing returns. Yeah, so I think we have that time pretty good. So usually, the first of our two episodes a month will be uh, around when uh, the Nightwing book comes out. So Night Terrors kind of threw it off a little bit, but I think we're getting back to our regular release date. So. All right, so yeah, so send us all your thoughts on uh, what do you think of Night Terror. Send us on the on the uh, classic stuff, the one forty two through one forty six, and then uh, yeah, every time a new issue comes out, yeah, let us know. Uh, send us your thoughts. Email us capesandlunatics at gmail dot com, or call the voicemail six one four three eight two two seven three seven. That's six one four thirty eight capes. And remember, you can find all things uh, Capes and Lunatics, uh, episodes, social media, merchandise, uh, links to the Patreon. Uh, find it all at uh, tubespace.io slash Capes and Lunatics Podcast Network. That's tubespace.io slash Capes and Lunatics Podcast Network. All right. And again, it's been a few weeks, so you may have forgotten, but you must, if you listen to this show, you must. It's a required reading. Go pick up Dick Grace and Boy Wonder on Amazon right now. And again, if you're a fan of the character, yes, it, you you will find new information in there. So, Kristen put together a hell of a book. So yeah, go pick it up. <laughs> and again, you support an educator when you do. All right, kids. <laughs> Enough of my goofiness. All right, thank you for joining us. That's right, kids. Wake up. <laughs> Night Terrors is over on this show. Wake up.
again in one week. Yes, next week, Nightwing 142 to 146. Oh, I saw speculation on the internet uh, real quick. Uh, they're saying, oh, is that Nightwing movie dead they were talking about like so long ago because there's been no updates. So. But they haven't they haven't come out and said they was it was dead. So We'll see. Again, with a writer strike, you know, it's, it, if anything, it'll be delayed anyway. Yeah, to a certain extent, everything's dead. <laughs> yes. All right, kids, so come back next time. Join us same wing time. Same wing chance. Nightwing News. <laughs>